I think everybody's received copies of the minute budget amendments are plain. Tax releases, tax refunds. I just had some questions for Mr. Cuppers as he's on about the health center lab thing. Okay. That's the only thing I, I had. Or should we say we need to if, take it, if, if you want to, if you want to take that item off of the consent agenda. Okay. You can, you can let's, the let's, 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 let's remove 11E and we'll put that under, I guess that would be old business, correct? My suggestion would be do you all want to tackle uh, 10 A and B tonight? Okay. We'll I'll set up all night. All right, that sounds good. So, old business, and we'll do items uh, 10 A and B. Um, we probably, Chester, do need to approve the minutes. If we can, let's, let, let's, let's go ahead and approve the consent agenda. If no one objects, we will remove item 11 E, the health center lab fee. We'll remove that from our consent agenda, move that to the 28th, and then we will consider item 12 A. <coughs> And the close. <coughs> okay. Any uh, any further corrections to the agenda? Do you understand all the corrections to that line? I do. I'll make a motion we approve the uh, adjusted agenda, Mr. Chairman. Okay. We have a motion by Mr. Beal, second, I believe, with Mr. Haven, to approve the agenda as amended. Uh, any discussion about that? All in favor, signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed. That motion passes. Uh, moving on to reports and presentations. Real quickly, Mr. Chairman, uh, I was in Raleigh talking about we met with the subcommittee on the 122C. The 122C, strangely enough, is to make up of the boards of the new LMEs. We met with uh, the new secretary, incoming secretary of BHSS, Mr. Albiala. And also represent Nelson Dollar from Wake County, who was chairing that committee. We did meet with that committee. Myself and uh, County Manager King from Swain County was part of a panel. Uh, 
our position is and has will and will continue to be that county commissioners certainly need to be a part of these boards as we move forward. We followed that up for the two-day meeting in Asheville with parts of this committee uh, as the mental health, uh, mental health continues to change and the Medicaid waiver does come online and it is coming. Uh, it looks like they'll end up with 12 LMEs statewide. Smokey will be one of those LMEs. Uh, we're talking about the makeups of the boards. And uh, so I just want to give a report back to the board that uh, not only with this board's consensus, but with the district's consensus, uh, our position continues to be we still need to remain strong and the county commissioner from each county needs to be represented on the board. I will travel back to Raleigh on Tuesday for further, uh, further talks with the new secretary and meeting with Mr. Dollar and this committee as we continue to work on uh, the LME governance issue. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. If it helps, uh, Mr. Dollar is a graduate of <coughs> Appalachian State University. was up there with me. He's not perfect. I just said he was up there. Uh, so that might help, but it might not. But he's a friend of mine. Has been for a long time. Um, you need to call him, man. <laughs> <laughs> call him what? You need to call him about this stuff. Um, any other reports or presentations of any board member? Anything else? I was talking about this now. It's to do with the plan of the report. Any other reports or presentations? Chester, where do you think, Jack? The only thing I'd report is I had a chance to uh, uh, give a presentation before the Joint Legislative Committee on local government debt financing yesterday in Raleigh. And uh, told them about all the final work that's been done in Macon County with our uh, school projects, our uh, budget, and, uh, and our financial situation. And uh, we also have representatives from the League of Municipalities, from the Local Government Commission, and from several uh, financing institutions. And I think uh, uh, the presentations went over very well. I don't know that any great changes will be coming down the pike from the uh, uh, the House or the Senate when it comes to local government finance. I think uh, a lot of questions were answered at that meeting yesterday, but we had a chance to participate, and I think uh, I think it was worthwhile. Okay. Thank you, Jack. If there's no more reports or presentations, we'll move to old business. Item 9A, uh, Chester, recognize you for that. Yes, just very briefly, Mr. Chairman. Uh, <coughs> The county has been working with the state of North Carolina in connection with micro tower lease. We have on a couple of occasions approved documents. Um, however, there have been some changes uh, to the description of property to be uh, leased and the um, original lease agreement, the memorandum of lease agreement, and sublease agreement. Uh, those changes have been uh, to make a better description, resulting from some survey work that uh, was requested by the state. Uh, those changes have been made to these documents I have tonight, a ground lease agreement, a memorandum of that lease, as well as a sublease agreement. Uh, I would ask that the board approve uh, and authorize you as the chairman to sign those on behalf of the county this evening so that those could be delivered to Mr. Uh, Randall, the State Highway Patrol. He intends to put this out for bid. If not today, come on. Do we have uh, questions for clarification, or I would entertain a motion. Mm -hmm. We have a motion by Mr. Tate, second by uh, Commissioner Cuffer. And uh, is this the last go around now, Chester? On I, this I, I trust that it is. Okay. Any other discussion? All in favor of the motion signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? That motion passes. Chester, I'll sign that. Uh, no more old business. We'll move to uh, new business. First item is the uh, consideration of amendments to the planning board ordinance, which we had the uh, had the hearing earlier. Mr. Chairman, I'd like since I've been so quiet this evening, I might go ahead and address and uh, maybe get the ball rolling on this. Maybe this one.
all of y'all know I'm the newest member of this board, and I think as y'all get to know me a little bit better, you'll come to find out that I'm a logical thinker, and I'm a pretty efficient thinker, and that's just two of the traits that I'm proud of in myself. Um, you'll also find out that I can become very passionate about things, so if my eyes start watering as I'm talking about this, it's not because I'm crying, it's because my eyes are sweating. <laughs> <laughs> and you're the, you're the way to talk. Yeah, I'll, I'll touch off on that. Okay. Um, you know, I, I, I signed up this afternoon to rerun for election uh, for this board. And I've only had two months to get used to it, but I can honestly say I'm not sitting up here because I want to pat on the back or because I need to leave more hair than what I already have. I'm sitting up here because I want to make a difference for this county. I love this county. Um, about a sixth generation from this county had a gold mine, and my kids are hoping to be a seventh. And I'm hoping that they're going to have the same opportunities that I was given, as well as my predecessors. Um, I'm not going to sit here and tell you that I'm pro Steve Slope. I'm not going to tell you that I'm anti Steve Slope. I'm going to keep that to myself. But I will tell each one of y'all that I am pro planning. I'm pro planning with my family, I'm pro planning with my business, and I'm pro planning for this county. I think it's all a good thing. I've heard recently uh, that I'm going to be the that I am the new liaison to the planning board, and I've, <clears throat> I hate to say this, but I've actually heard that that's political suicide right now. That oh my gosh, I mean just looking at the turnout tonight, the various opinions, this, that, and the other, and uh, it's going to be awful, and you're going to kill yourself running for the next election. I don't necessarily believe that. Um, again, as I just said, I'm an efficient, I'm a logical thinker, and I want to stand up here and I want to make a difference. So with that in mind, I don't mind this challenge of trying to help the planning board along its way. Um, I've got two primary goals for the planning board. I want them to be effective, and I want them to be able to reach a legitimate compromise on what they're discussing. And if we have a good cross-section of this entire county, and they're able to do those two things, they're going to be such a better tool for us as commissioners. And again, you're going to, I'm going to repeat this again. I'm a bit efficient and logical. Thank you. So with that in mind, I'd like to go ahead and make the motion that we approve the amendment to the planning board ordinance of uh, term ordinance. Mr. Chair, I'll second that for purposes of discussion. Okay, so you. I was going to, I was going to suggest we need to do one of two things. We can discuss this further uh, for, for clarification, or we would need a motion in second to put it on the floor. And Commissioner Tate, I think you did make that motion, and, and Commissioner Coppers Coppers discuss. Commissioner Cuppers seconded the motion, uh, and that motion would be uh, to approve the uh, the amended. What would it, 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 it would be the amendment to the planning board ordinance, which was read here before Correct. in the uh, public hearing. time to say this. I've got several things I'm going to say. Um, but I'm going to say this before Bobby speaks. And we've, I know we've got several members of the planning board here. Um, my direction personally has been to clarify roles. Uh, Larry and I, we talked about that. talked about it with Carl. I've talked about it with, with most members of the planning board. Um, certainly not to do away with the planning board, to minimize the planning board. Um, my goal personally is is to make an efficient process where uh, it, it's an advisory board. And when I've said that, I'm not talking about changing roles. I've heard people say that, that our board is out to minimize or change the planning board. And even when I said that at our, our uh, board retreat, my friend Ron said, well, it, in the way it's always been. They're an advisory board. 
And I couldn't agree with that more. And so that was my very reason for saying it, was just to clarify that. Uh, we recognize that. And, and, and so we recognize that the planning board is an advisory board to this board, and the buck stops here, all that language. And I guess my goal is just to clarify that. And, and so everybody, you guys have to understand that. We understand that. But I'm not sure the public understands that. Uh, I'm not blaming anybody with that. And, and my goal, folks, <coughs> Betty Wolf knows me as well as anybody in this room. And she sat as I chaired the school board for a long time. And she'll tell you where my heart is. I want to go to school a year. So a lot of this stuff that people talk about, mm -hmm. I wasn't here. Okay? A lot of these guys weren't here. My goal is to move forward from today. Everybody can be a, a Monday morning. I'm an excellent Monday morning quarterback. I can tell you exactly what Josh Brooks should have done Friday night, especially if he lost when he lose him this year. My goal is not to talk about last Friday night. My goal is to talk about next Friday night. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. And I want to clarify something else with Bobby sitting here. This thing got real <clears throat> elevated. A lot of emotion involved in it, which I don't I don't think should happen. I'll make that clear. I think we all I operate better uh, when talking logically and clearly and, and calmly. And that's that's the way I do things, that's the way I will do things. Um, but when I, I call Bobby Cumbers and he will tell you this, now, I didn't take him off his planning board liaison as any kind of political move or anything. But we don't talk Republican Democrat. I think he knows I'm a Republican. You know we're probably not your son. Okay. Talk about that. <laughs> but I couldn't agree with Jimmy Goodman more. You take politics out of it. When, when, you're, when you're elected or selected, in my case, to, to fill my son's fire term, I recognize that. Your goal is to work for Macon County. It's, it's not to be, to do that as a Republican, to do that as a Democrat. Fine, stand up for your party, be proud of who you are, what you are, and I am. But when I asked Bobby to, about the planning board, we talked about it, and he'll tell you. I didn't say, Bobby, I'm jerking you off that liaison because you didn't do a good job or because I want to change things politically. That, that did not happen. We talked about it. We had uh, a couple new opportunities. What was it, Ronnie? The, uh, LBJ that wanted to liaison and also the library. And, so, and also uh, Brian was our health board liaison. So I've talked to Bobby about that. Those are pretty busy boards. Bobby, Bobby's a talented guy. He's a smart guy. So I asked him if he'd take the, the uh, health board, right? board the library board. He said he would. I said, the planning board takes a lot of time. Do you want me to maybe, how about Jimmy, since he's had some experience? I think that'd be a great idea, he said. So I just want to make that clear that uh, I, think, I think Bobby's done a good job as a liaison between our board and the planning board. And, uh, Things a good guy as far as that goes, and, and I just want to say that publicly that he, I thought he did a, an excellent job as a liaison. And uh, Jimmy, maybe I didn't do you any favors to point you that. I don't know, but uh, I know you'll do a good job as well. So sorry, Mr. Peppers. Oh, no. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I think I need to just pass the microphone off. There's nothing left for me to say. Uh, as question as I am to public speaking, I, I just want to make a couple comments about the about the uh, term limits. Term limits in, in, in their own concept. I have no problem. I have no problem with the term limited board. What I have a problem with is when those term limits are not aimed at the county, when they are not aimed at a board, but where they appear to be aimed at individual citizens on a board with whom we disagree. I have an issue with that. I would like to see us go ahead and, in, and invoke term limits tonight, and I, I won't make the motion yet. We'll talk it out, let everybody talk it out, but I'm going to give you my opinion. I believe the term limits are fine. They should be universal. It should be across the board. There should be no county advisory board that does not have term limits. Unless it is a board that we do not control, that is controlled and term limited by state statute or by federal statute or initially by ordinance, although I think over time we can take care of that too. Second, yes, we have an abundance of talented people in this county. But I would hate to think, I will, I will tell you without question, Mr. Chairman, if I was on the planning board for six years and I was really into planning and I was doing a bang up job and you took me off that planning board for three years, you would not see me again. You would not see me again. That is too long.
So I would recommend, and for consideration by my fellow board members, the possibility of making it a one-year hiatus instead of a three-year hiatus. Now there's one other problem that we've got, and we all know we've got it, and so we might as well talk about it. There are boards which aren't as glamorous, and I don't know where they got up the planning board was glamorous, but there's, no, there's some boards that are just not as, they're not as dramatic, they, they, don't, they don't get their name in the paper, which I've always thought was a good thing, to not get your, not get your name in the paper. <laughs> but they're just as important, but we don't have a waiting list of people standing by to sit on those boards. And so I think we would have to have some sort of mechanism by which if a board created a vacancy by a person reaching their term limits and no one has applied to be on that board, then we simply put language in our appointment policy that we've got that says, if you get within a certain amount of time, oh, well, let's just take a hypothetical 30 days, if you don't have an appointment, if you don't have a volunteer within 30 days, then we can turn to the person who's in the job and appoint them again. Because there's not a waiting list. That will probably never happen in the entire foreseeable future of the planning board that we would actually get to an opening and not have anybody there. But I think if you're looking at the library board, if you're looking at the community funding pool, if you're looking at a lot of these boards, that we're, we're going to come into the situation. So those are the things that I would like to see us consider. I am not a fan. Oh, and there's one up. This is the 500-pound the gorilla in the room, so we might as well talk about this one. As I said in my opening argument when I was talking about not aiming the impo imposition of term limits at individuals, I believe that retroactivity, if that, I know radioactivity is a word I used to work in that, but it's retroactivity a word I don't know. But by making them retroactive, to me, it is a thinly failed effort to aim those term limits at individuals that you know are not eligible because they've been on the board for a long time. I think we should do it this way. And this is just my opinion, y'all can help me hash this out. But I would love to see us say, everybody gets one more. Okay, if you're on a board right now, you're on your first term. Everybody gets one more appointment, and then if you were term limited at the end of that one appointment, then you are now term limited. Nobody in this room could say we're aiming that at any individual because everybody's playing on the same level playing field. And that's all I got to say. And I don't know, y'all tell me what you think about that, but I, I'm opposed to term limits. Let me just say that I entered this night opposed to term limits. I think we have term limits. Just like I think we have term limits for the Senate and the Congress, for those of you that are out there, it's called November the 4th or 5th or 6th. You can vote us out, you can vote them, everybody's got term limits, okay? There, there, there's, no, there's no office in America that doesn't have term limits. You know, we can vote anybody out. And so I think that I'm against them. But in the interest of consensus and compromise, which I heard that word over here, gosh, I like that word, because I think compromise today too often times is equated with weakness. Now let me tell you what, I've done both, and sometimes it's, it takes a lot more strength to compromise than it does to stand in a room and say, it's my way or the highway. So with that said, in the interest of compromise, I'd like to put that forth for consideration. Is that a motion for an amendment? It will be after you guys get done discussing it. Okay. If I can get, let's well, see, I'll have to get Mr. Tate. He made a motion, so he'd have to change it. And now i, I got to find out what, where he is. Let's get back to you. Go ahead. Well, a while ago, whenever I got up and I talked a little bit, I've got something that I want to say, and I'm not putting it in a motion. I'm putting it in a suggestion. And it's where I've coming from all along on something. I would enjoy seeing Macon County have a strong planning board one that we can depend on, one's going to treat us fair. It's a, an advisory board, and I know you spend a lot of time on it. I've seen it. I've actually only missed about two or three planning board meetings in two years. And when I have, it's been when I had a conflict of another uh, commissioner meeting or something, that's why I didn't come. 
And I've talked to some of the other gentlemen up here behind the scene about this. I think as being a commissioner, I've got a big job out here, and so is the rest of them taking care of our county, period. Whether we're trying to do the best we can to keep regulations we don't need away, or considering regulations we do need. And there's a very fine line, ladies and gentlemen, in between that. I'm kind of like this here. I don't steal the gas out of the car. I give you some. I don't steal my money. I'll let you have some if I have any. But I don't steal my property rights neither. But also property rights always is not considered just that. You've got to figure the next person's property rights. I'm all for having a strong, very strong planning board. And yes, I did make that comment if we couldn't do it to a policy. I'm not backing up to say I didn't say it. I want to see us have a good planning board. It's just like I was talking to some of these gentlemen right here about regulations. That well inspection, that's something I don't see and wouldn't vote for. The thing about this, the one problem that I have solved with the planning board, and this is only a recommendation, all right? If we make a motion or have consent up here among us to give a project to you, I think where we know exactly what we have asked you to do, it should be typed by our secretary and each one of us signed and have our liaison to take it and present it to you. This way, I'm not saying, Bobby, don't you even take that as I'm wrong. Somebody, or what, no, wait, wait, don't hold your hand. Somebody that said that I said that you was a bad liaison. That was not what I meant for that statement when we got around to it. But if we have got a signed copy of what we know is going to that plan for, we know what we asked you for advice for. Is that a fair statement? At the same time, if you've got questions about it, you need to bring it back to us, send it back to us in writing. And if this is done and we have kept a track of communication this close, I think it's going to take this argument out of it. He said, she said, and we're going to make something that's going to work for everybody. On this last question that, uh, or on my comment on this uh, term limits, I don't want to put somebody in a bind on something. But I recommend that we start those term limits tomorrow. There's a reason why that I didn't say right now, but that's my suggestion. And I know there's some big controversy right here that I left the door open right then what I said. Everybody else can make go against this, but it's my recommendation. Let me see how I'm going to say this, because I'm going to say as honest as I know how to be. I think Lewis Penland is a good man, I really do. And I don't know how to say it any clearer than me and him don't agree with our politics. Is that fair enough for me to state that? But if we have done this and if you did consider it, this ordinance changed exactly the way we presented our last meeting. And that was done, I'm gonna look right out there and tell you, I'd vote for Lewis right now to go right back on there and thus shut this mess up, get it to working, have a good, strong planning board that work for us, and go on to things that is more important to citizens of Macon County. Because I think right now, the Macon County needs us worse than ever have. Uh, as, as Chairman, I have no problem with what we task the planning board with. Uh, to put that in writing, I think we typically that would be in our minutes, <coughs> Chester, certainly signed by myself and and uh, county manager. But if, if, if everybody needs to sign that that particular thing, I have no. I mean, I think we could just do that. I don't think I, that I would think take any clerk, action. Yeah, the clerk of the board is responsible for making sure that those decisions are properly reported and the minutes are indeed approved by the yes. uh, by the board. So there is an opportunity to look at those. If additional steps are desired, you would certainly do that. And that wouldn't require board action if we could just do that. Okay. Thank you. 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 Thank
Mr. Taylor, do you have other comments? No, I'm ready to make a motion. It's good enough. You, 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 make you, make you, sort of you want to amend your motion? If everybody's through speaking on that, I will speak uh, just because I think I have to. Uh, you know, the planning board, uh, I don't think we have a weak planning board. Let me state that up front. I think we've had a wonderful planning board that's brought things to this board uh, that we have not acted on for a lot of different reasons. You have had a huge change on this board uh, that's it's sitting in front of you tonight from where a lot of these things started and you were given a list of things to do. This planning board done them unequivocally. All you've been done has been lampooned, laughed at, and uh, that's not right. The planning board has done a wonderful job. On the, on the subject of term limits, I think I've made myself clear from the first time it was mentioned, the term limits can stop right here. But I like Mr. Cuppers and Spirit of Cooperation. If it's worded, if the amendment is worded right, we do have retroactive term limits, and uh, and we give each one a fair shot uh, because cohesiveness and, and the people that's on this planning board, a lot of boards are experiences that is really needed and necessary, but no more than the planning board. And all of you will agree to that. It is hard to bring somebody up to speed on the planning board <coughs> on a lot of these things that drag on. Because we have sat and argued for hours, Larry <coughs> Stinger, on two words. You know it's true. And, and, that's, and that's a good thing. There's nothing wrong with that. And I think what we've come out of the planning board is something that most folks can live with. So I will be interested in to hear the motion on the amendment, uh, Mr. Chairman. And if it's worded right, I would love to be able to support it. If not, I will certainly vote against it. So you vote for it or against it? <laughs> <laughs> you got to vote against it. Okay. Let's share the whole motion. All right. Perfect. Are you going to? I'll do my best. And let, let, me just, let, me just, let me just clarify for with Chester. If, 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 we, if we make some recommendations, I hear them. They'll make some suggestions here to, to sort of beat on this thing. You can make those changes without rewriting that entire document. I, I think we can, but I'm prepared to do that. Okay. Okay. I, wouldn't, I didn't know we were going to be here, so I'm just trying to do things the right way. I see uh, several members of the planning board uh, in here that I actually have the privilege of serving with. And, uh, I'm being honest when I'm saying I'm actually looking forward to serving with all, all of y'all again uh, as a liaison and uh, doing my best to communicate back and forth the ideas coming from this board uh, as well as from your board, as Mr. Hayden was uh, stating there. Um, I, I think. Uh, my notes that I just quickly, quickly jotted down for Mr. Cuppers was uh, uh, we'll be changing, which, which I'm fine with because this uh, is very similar to the way the town of Highlands does it, and I think it works well for them. Uh, that uh, we'll have a one year period off versus a three year period off. So it'll be two, three year terms of service with one year off. Uh, I'm in agreement with uh, making this with basically every other board in the county. It's not. Right. Be, but those, not, well, those will be not, yeah. not in this order, but those will be handled outside of your motion. But yes, eventually that's true. Okay. Yes. I'm, in, I'm in agreement with that. Um, I'm in agreement uh, with the, uh, the first term of service uh, being served. So every member would have one more term, is my understanding. Um, and then at least, at least one more. Yeah. yeah. And then. Uh, is that it? So there's a question about the appointment language. Oh, that, that'll that actually be outside the, the, the motion. Okay. Like I said, what we're dealing with is just the planning board ordinance. When we get to 12A, we'll, we'll talk about how to fix it. So, are you comfortable? I'm very comfortable. Are you comfortable? Yeah. I, think I, I think I have the direction. Okay. Uh, Mr. Chairman, I'm sorry. Okay. So you, you've amended your motion to, to make those changes. That's correct. Do you, you accept that? I, I accept that. Second. And, and with the understanding, outside the motion, gentlemen, when we get to 12A, we're going to take care of the universal universal uh, term limit issue. Well, and let me say a couple things. Um, I, 
I do agree with the idea of term limits, not philosophically, I believe in it <coughs> for all uh, uh, levels of government or whatever. And uh, most I've served on a lot of boards, you guys have too, that you can serve one term or two terms, and you have to come off and even in my church meetings. Generally, you serve one or two terms, and you have to sit up at least a year. So I'm, I'm, I'm going to school board. I was on, I was on three, board, three terms, and then I didn't run. And then I came back and ran again, ran again because Betty Walker called me into it stand in the camera. <laughs> so I did term limit myself. I served three terms. Then I didn't run. Then I came back and ran and was elected two more times. And then didn't run after that. So I do believe in that. And uh, if I understand you correctly, this term limit thing would begin immediately. But with, with, the, with, the, with the change. Yeah. Um, with, and other than that, you, you, with the one term cap. you've amended uh, to where you come off for one year and then you could be reappointed. And, uh, and let me point out the obviousness is sort of what I've said all along. If, you know, the fact is, if there are members on there that, that, that you don't want or don't feel like they're productive, uh, then you need to have the intestinal fortitude to stand up and vote them off. I mean, and that's no change is necessary. And, that, and we don't need to change that, but we can do that anyway. Sure. The other issue on there that was included in that provision was that all terms were Three years. So let me see if I've got it. As soon as they finish this term they're in now, they're going to get another another term. They're up for real. They're, they're up for real point. Eligible, but not automatic. But they still I have think the easiest way to look at it. They pull two terms, three terms, one term. I think the easiest way to look at it is regardless of how long you've been on it, you get one real point. One, and you get one, one opportunity, opportunity. Right. and then, regard, then, then if, if you are past six years, whether that be 12 years, 15 years, or just six years, you are the internal member. And it, everybody, gets one, right, everybody gets one reappointment opportunity right. if you're currently it's on the opportunity. Um, yeah, right. uh, that's what I said. If, you, if there's someone that we don't want to put <coughs> there, then, then you vote them off, and that is it. Yeah. 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 Other discussion? This just for clarification, uh, is that uh, an amendment to the original motion yes. that's the second is well, yes. we, we we just as on our point, given that this is an ordinance and given that we definitely want to make it right, the board would allow me the latitude of about five minutes. Put it in black and white for you. Read it. Make sure it's what everybody wants. It's a great idea. It's a great idea. So we can hold that. Hold that. So you, you, want to, <coughs> you want to hold the vote on it? I think that would be appropriate. We'll read it, no and that way we've got it correct. So you have to suspend until you come back. If that's acceptable. That's acceptable. Okay. Y'all can move on. Okay. Unless you've got something. Well, even, even, though even, though even, though right. even though we have an open motion. Oh, we have a motion to second for the discussion phase. Then. Do we need to call for a vote or do we need to just recess to make come a motion back? to approve the language clarified by the county attorney so that the final motion covers all the points that the board outlined in their discussion? That would be appropriate. What? Say it again. Y'all <laughs> <laughs> kidding? Roberts is wrapping me around the axle tonight. I just want to do it the right way. Say it again. Let's see, what, what the county attorney has proposed to do is go ahead and commit to writing the discussion that y'all had and without right now. before you actually <coughs> vote so that when you vote, you're voting on the actual motion that covers all the points that y'all discussed. Uh, There's no misunderstanding. Yeah. Okay. Right. I understand that. But with the motion open, do we do right now? Can we, can we go on or can we? Well, I think Jeff needs to be here for whatever, if we're going to go to B. Yeah. Uh, but we just wait up. We're just not <laughs> fast. It's that important. I mean, I think it's that important. Right. Do you want to go ahead and take care of the uh, set agenda, Mr. Chairman, all the way to the right? Can we do that? Can we do that with an open motion? That's what I'm asking. Yeah. 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 Can we go ahead and do the business? Or we just wait for you back? I think the consent of the entire board is fine. Okay. Does everybody consent to go on and do the consent agenda or whatever? Okay, we'll we'll drive on. Uh, we'll go
move to item 11, uh, 11 A, B, C, D, and F. We have removed E to put that off to the, to the uh, 28th meeting. That's the consent. This is a consent agenda. It includes the minutes, budget amendments, tax releases, tax refunds, uh, and the amended ordinance concerning procedures for disposing of personal property. Board members received copies of all this in advance. Any questions? If not, uh, yeah. motion to approve. Be in order. Motion to approve, Mr. Chairman. We have a second. Second for the purpose of discussion, Mr. Right. Yeah, yeah. Uh, we, have, we have to discuss. Okay, we have a motion and a second. Go ahead. On uh, item D and the consent agenda, uh, the last sentence says that the tax registry of Richard Lightyear is ready for approval of the jobs request, but not the downs request. So are we approving the downs request or are we only approving one recommended? Uh, or we're, we're, we're approving this recommendation. Correct. Any more questions? Mr. Chairman. No, Mr. Manager, I do have a question on 11L, the amendment of ordinance concerning procedure for disposing of personal property. Uh, with this, this, would that solve the problems that we've had with, with vehicles? And is, is this what, by reading this, is this? This, this is something that uh, Kenny Gurney and I have discussed on several occasions. If you recall, the board took action some time back to authorize the manager to dispose of personal property by legal means uh, that that was valued under $5,000. Uh, another option that we have is to uh, uh, have electronic uh, auction uh, through dove deals and so forth. And the uh, county attorney wanted to make sure that all those options were covered in this. Uh, anything over $5,000 in value could be brought back to the board for final approval. But this gives us all the options uh, through our office as well. I don't have a problem with that. I just, I do have, you know, the electronic is fine if the county can earn more money, but I really don't see where it gives the Macon County citizens who paid for this stuff the first opportunity to bid on this stuff. Well, they're the ones who paid for this stuff, so. Well, but this doesn't, this doesn't force us to use electronic. We still can have the negotiated offers under $5,000. So we can go out to the county garage and all those vehicles there, we can have an open option on a Saturday. You could do that. That's, that's, another, that's another option as well. I just want to make sure that the, the people that paid for it get an opportunity to. Does that make sense? Absolutely. I mean, if, that's, if, if you're satisfied with that, I'm, I'm, I'm satisfied, satisfied with that. I'm satisfied it gives us enough flexibility to do what we need to do with all these uh, pieces of property that are in most cases, they're worth less than $500 in a lot of cases. So they're very, very uh, minor values. So I think what this does is basically give us an opportunity to use all the remedies that are approved legally to dispose of personal property. Uh, and I, I, would, I would say our first option would be to try and make sure that the taxpayers of Macon County have the first opportunity to uh, Purchase this property, and uh, if we can do that, then that's our first option. If we don't have any luck doing that, there are other options that we could use, um, including uh, formal bids or uh, uh, public auctions and electronic auctions and so forth. So, the number four, Mr. Manager, to make sure I understand, the Maine County Manager may publish notice of such sales, exchanges, or electronic auction. What you're saying is that we would advertise it locally to give the local taxpayers an opportunity first. And if that's not successful, we can move on. We'd like to do that. Uh, what we've had in the past, I think, as a matter of record, when we've had just a mass auction for uh, vehicles, for example, we might get 100 or 200 dollars for it on some of these electronic auctions. Where they, uh, other counties have been able to get several thousand dollars for the same uh, uh, item, and it's a matter of <coughs> money back to the taxpayers. So uh, it uh, gives them an opportunity of county wants to pay for market price and value for that, they got the first option to do that. Otherwise, it's a maximizing the return back to the tax period because all the money goes back to jail. As long as they have an opportunity. As long as they have an opportunity, absolutely. That's all the thing I care about, Mr. Chair. Okay. Any, other, any other questions? Can I yeah. make a comment, Mr. Chairman? 
Yes. Mr. Beal, um, gov deals, I've had experience with it in the past, and like Jack was saying, where you try maybe have a public auction, you can bring in more money back to the county, which, of course, adds to the general fund, and then in turn helps the citizens, you know, by lunch in the general fund. And also, you know, registering for gov deals is simple. You don't have to be like, you know, a business owner to create a gov deals account. So, like, if you even, you know, as a citizen wanted to go on gov deals and create an account, you can, which allows you to bid on the items along with the other pool as well. It would be easier for people that make a to bid on these items than it would be for people that make a to bid on items that are surplus by the state of North Carolina. Understood. My only question. Any other questions? Take your question. Yeah, I did. <coughs> Jack, I'm <coughs> Please excuse my ignorance being wet behind the ears, but can we make an amendment to the ordinance? Uh, which ordinance are you thinking about? I don't know. It says consideration of the ordinance and making revisions to the ordinance for certain procedures for the state of North Carolina. I think that is, I've asked the attorney about that, but that's not a, uh, I don't think that's an ordinance that uh, requires public hearing. That's not an ordinance that requires public hearing. Any other uh, any other discussion or questions on the consent agenda? Hearing none, all in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed, same sign. Consent, consent agenda passes. Uh, well, I'll check and see if the attorney said five minutes, Mr. Chair. Well, he's been giving you four anyway. <laughs> That's eighty two dollars. <laughs> Can we go on to 12A, gentlemen, um, while, while we're here? That would be consideration or vision to appoint the procedure. Yes, sir, Mr. Chairman, if you would, I think that would be very critical because you've got some points that are coming up that are going to be coming up. The appointment procedure that the board approved some time back. Um, Can y'all hear me? That's it. No. Can you hear me? No. Okay. <laughs> The appointment procedure that the board approved some time back uh, that was actually uh, adopted by the board included one item that says that uh, openings on the board would be uh, uh, vacancies for, for various authorities, boards, commissions, and committees will be published in the Franklin Press. Uh, that is time consuming, costly, and delays the entire process, and we think that most people uh, would have better access, immediate access, uh, continued access if we advertise these vacancies on the county's website uh, as soon as they become available. And I think that would be a, a much quicker way to get the word out. And uh, as soon as a, a vacancies occurred, 30 days or 60 days when we were notified of that, we could post those on, a, on the website in a conspicuous place. Uh, so that it would be very evident to anybody who looked at the county website that we had vacancies and openings on these commissions or committees or boards and uh, so what we're asking is the board to consider uh, that uh, changing the, the wording and the appointment authority to let us post that instead of publishing it in the local newspaper uh, put it on our county website and publish it there <laughs> to complete that thought that we had a minute ago about <coughs> universal term limits um, I'm going to hand out a, a piece of paper that I just threw together uh, on the off chance that we might get to this point. I just took a chance, and there it is. Uh, I'd like to add a couple other things. Uh, and, and you can see in here that I've made the change that the county manager asked for in the very first paragraph. I've changed, changed the third paragraph on the second page to read. There's a part on the back, too, guys. It's front and back. Uh, Vacancies for the various authorities, boards, commissions, and committees will be published on the Macon County website. Okay, so that, that takes care of what you wanted. Then it describes term limits, and I, and I ask you just to read that. I'm not going to read it out loud unless you want me to read it indirectly, but, but this does two things. It makes term limits universal to all boards not governed by North Carolina statute, current county ordinance, or uh, uh, federal regulations. Now, eventually the goal will be, and we'll have to have a, another public hearing for that, would be to take all the term limit language and have it reside in this document outside of all ordinances. That would be my goal, if, if, if you guys agree. Uh, 
it, it sets up the, the three on or two, two on one year off just as we've approved for the planning board at this point that would apply everywhere and it provides us if you look down in the in the uh, ensured continuity of these boards the following procedure will be followed advertisement if no one applies within 30 days of the vacancy then you can appoint the person that's already in there okay so that takes care of that part that i talked about is everybody with me so far then on the back it talks about implementation and it says term limits will be effective once the board of commissioners approves this policy term limits will not be retroactive any member of the board of committee at the time of enactment of this policy will be eligible for one more appointment regardless of how long they have served prior to enactment before they will be term limited any appointments pending on the date of enactment can be completed and those individuals will be term limited at the end of that term so that pretty well wraps all that up and the one thing that uh, I also added, if you look at the bottom of the second paragraph under term limits, if for some reason a member of the board is not reappointed after his or her first term, they would not be eligible to reapply for a period of one year. So that's kind of all the things I said in the first, but we have to separate it out because of the way the public hearing was advertised. We couldn't, we, we had to do the planning board and then we have to do this. Ultimately, Mr. Chairman, with the board's concurrence, I would like to see us move all the term limit language into this document and, and govern term limits from our appointment procedures. Okay. As far as this that's discussion, that's just discussion. And, I, and I'll make a motion. So, to, so to what, what Jack's asking for is is just the uh, advertising procedure. Now, let me add one thing, if you don't mind, I, just because I recognize everybody doesn't have a computer, like most people do, but at least at, at our meetings, either once a month or twice a month, that when we have those folks come up, that we make them public at the meeting, and that way these folks have a way of, they have a way of printing that. Uh, I guess we're asking them to do it free and said pay it for it. <laughs> but I'm just saying, to me that makes sense to, to make it public at our meeting, and in addition to that, put it on the website. I'm, I'm fine with that. I think that's fine, and, and uh, the website is just another way to get it out in the public. But before, what we need to do is go ahead, and I know you probably can't hear me, but I'm talking a little bit louder. What we need to do is, is exactly what you're saying. Uh, when an appointment is coming up on a board or a commission or a committee, announce it here. Announce that here at a board meeting 30 or 60 days prior to that becoming coming available. And so the I, I can agree with that. We change it. So that, that wouldn't be, I think that needs to continue to be a part of the process. So the actual. The motion would need to be that we any upcoming <laughs> openings on boards or commissions would be announced at board meetings. What did you say, Jack? Six, Sixty days prior. Uh, well, <coughs> uh, yeah. As long as we keep up with it, uh, uh, whatever the board desires. Can, can we do that? Is that is that doable? Uh, at least 30, 30, say thirty, 30, days. 30 days. At least thirty days prior to the opening. Prior to the uh, sixty days would be better, but at least thirty days. Uh, at prior. least. <laughs> It would be announced at, at, to the board and at the board meeting at least 30 days prior. Prior to the vacancy. Prior to the vacancy and it would be uh, advertised on the county's website. Is that what I understand? Well, Mr. Chairman, I think, the, I think the motion goes further than that, though. If we're going to, in fact, have universal term limits, then we've got to adopt language similar to this in order to make that happen. It will not happen any other way about it. It will not happen where we're sitting right now. I kind of thought that's what we were on the edge of, so I'm hoping that. Well, and I think you can do it. It covers it. Uh, what I was asking for is to be able to advertise it on the website. Absolutely. But yeah. if the board wants to amend the appointment process, which would include that, I, and that's it what would include not only that's what, what I'm saying. I, I would like. To, I'd like to see us consider. It doesn't have to be this language, but language like that to, that would include. Can, that would include. Can we? Let, let me suggest this. Because right, you you sort of got. We got bullet points we've talked about as far as doing term limits for all boards and yeah. what we're talking about. If if we agreed in theory to do that, uh, can you can you just arise this? Can, can you can you come back with us next month or, or whenever? Yeah. With you, you're talking outside about outside ordinance. Outside of ordinance. At board right. right. We're well, talking. Absolutely. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Fair enough. That way we just I'll be comfortable with it. Again, I don't think we know exactly what we're voting on unless it's written down. I know you got bullet points. Nope. Right now, we don't have it. No, it's and not bullet points. It's, it's, it's a change. Yeah. I used to write those for a living. So it's a change based on the instruction that you it's already have. Line by line. But we'll put it in a form of resolution. Okay. It'll be fine. Okay. Yeah, it ain't bullet points. 
So with that, Mr. Chairman, I would, I would recommend that we uh, suspend the consideration or revision of the formal procedure until the 28th. We I'll have, I'll, 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 however, I do think that you want to go ahead and change to yes. uh, okay. how you're yes. going to advertise these positions. I for yes. Yes. Yeah, I got you. Right. I got you. Okay. Yeah, I'll, 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 take the, I'll take the blame or the credit or, or whatever you want to call it for that. When the policy was being developed and eventually approved by the board, one of the things that we said we could do is advertise those in the press. We've had several applications for members that want to serve on the planning board that have not been advertised in the press. We want to make sure that everybody has an opportunity to do that. If the board approves this uh, change in policy, uh, for uh, uh, advertising these local positions. We can make all those positions available on the county website as early as tomorrow morning. So before you meet again in two weeks, we would have to make sure everybody had an opportunity who was interested in making an application to serve on the planning board or whatever boards come up in, within the two-week period, they would have an opportunity to apply for that. It, it's where, okay, that, let's, let's deal with this. I think the county management request is, is stated before is to advertise openings uh, at our meetings at least 30 days prior to that opening and then also to advertise it on the county's website. So 30 so days? We could do that. The, the, the one that we have now, the, 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 the one that's pending now, the, the appointments of the planning board, the two okay. appointments of the planning board that are pending now have been out for a couple of months, but they haven't been published in the paper. But, uh, They've been published in the paper over and over. Well, they probably have, as as but concerned. not an official classified section well, of the paper. So, uh, if we could, if we could go let ahead and make the motion that there. there. Go ahead. Let me make the motion that we that we change the application procedure to say that the, that the county manager will cause to have the vacancies cause the vacancies to be advertised on the Macon County website and an at, and an announcement at the meeting closest to closest to. We have a second. There's no time. No. We have a second to motion. Okay. We have a motion and a second. On the uh what you talking about on the batch of task groups to advertise on the position and the website versus what we have this paper. Any other discussion? All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Section 1.7 of an ordinance to establish the planning board for Macon County is amended and as it presently exists is hereby amended to read as follows. 1.7, appointees may be reappointed for successive terms. However, notwithstanding the foregoing, the following rules shall apply, control, and prevail. A, no member of the planning board may serve on the planning board for more than six consecutive years. However, Notwithstanding that, or the foregoing, those members of the planning board who have been appointed or reappointed and who are serving on the planning board 
as of the effective date of this provision may be reappointed for one additional three-year term even though such reappointment would result in such member of the planning board serving in excess of six consecutive years. B, subject to the provisions of section 1.7a above, any member of the planning board who has served six consecutive years or more as a member of the planning board shall wait at least one year before becoming eligible to serve another term as a member of the planning board and C, that, that is unchanged, but it reads that the present terms of the members of the planning board, of the planning board members as, I'm sorry, the present terms of the members of the planning board members as of the effective date of this provision shall not be affected by the provisions of section 1.7 A and B. Do we not also change 1.4 from the for the seat number 10 from four to three years? Uh, that that was as it was here before. No, the the, 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 the change that that's the way it is prior. To that's the way it was read last during the public hearing. Yeah. Last century. Yeah. Last century. <laughs> Does that Other questions? Does that does that represent your motion? Does that represent your second? All right. Sounds discussion. Okay. Call the question. Okay. No other discussion. All in favor of the motion, signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? Mm -hmm. Motion passes. Mr. Hagan, Mr. Hagan. And 
I personally would. I just don't. Is, do we need to do that before motion second, or, or do we put it? I think it can be done either okay. way. Jack, you want to address the board? I'm not too glad to do this. <laughs> The uh, ordinance amendment before the board is to uh, strike the uh, requirement in the subdivision ordinance of uh, putting the uh, statement read by the county attorney on plans for proposed subdivisions. And uh, the, the reason for that, I think, discussed in the past has been that uh, the, uh, all of the, the, uh, the flood, the uh, slope hazard maps are very important as a planning tool, very important as a uh, or a resource, they are not to the specific uh, degree of detail as our flood zone maps are in order to delineate uh, uh, specific pieces of property. Whether the, uh, they're in or out. Whether they're in or out. The scale of the, uh, of the uh, slope hazard maps is uh, uh, one foot to 24,000. One to 24,000, I believe. Is that correct? No. There, what's, what's the uh, what's the scale on the uh, slope hazard maps compared by the state? Maybe on the big acre map, they're good down to one inch or five hundred feet or one to six. Is the scale that we're done? On. Do we have those? The paper maps that we're distributing to the county. It was my understanding that Frank, those I think we can't hear. Just bring it up here so we can hear. Maybe that's just as important. Yeah, you can step to the microphone and uh, tell us a little bit about it. But uh, I, I'll go back while Mr. Morgan has come to the phone. I'll come into the uh, microphone, Mr. Chairman. Uh, <laughs> uh, those maps, as someone mentioned earlier, were put on the county's website uh, as a resource back uh, probably a couple of years ago. Uh, there was some discussion about uh, how uh, accurate these predicted maps were on identifying specific parcels uh, and to determine whether or they were or were not uh, in the slope hazard area. Uh, and I think that the, the, uh, the discussion was that these are predictive maps. Uh, these products, uh, however, are intended to serve for general planning purposes only and are provided on an as-is basis. These maps and products do not substitute for on-the-ground site assessment uh, by qualified individuals. And uh, uh, the North Carolina Geological Survey themselves refer to these areas as potential risk, as general areas and not specific areas. And I think one of the problems that we were having from an administrative standpoint, and Mr. Morgan and, and Mr. Rowland can clarify that, is that uh, uh, the maps are very good for uh, uh, identifying areas, uh, but not uh, as good a scale as we would need in order to uh, use them for uh, uh, administrative uh, legal requirements and as far as uh, plants that are being, uh, being produced or approved by the planning board. For example, the uh, floodplain maps are to the scale that you can identify very small pieces of property within the flood zones. My understanding is that the uh, slope uh, hazard maps were not detailed enough to identify property specifically. And so if you're going to use it for regulatory purposes, you would have to have much more detail than what is included in that, uh, in those maps as they currently exist. And that's my understanding, Mr. Moore. Uh, I can to answer your question. The, the statement about the scale of those maps being 124,000 feet is Reported in the document, summary of slope movement hazard maps and data from Macon County by the North Carolina Geological Survey, dated September 29, 2006. And it says uh, these data are intended to be used at a 1 to 24,000 scale. This, this is the paper maps that Macon County would have presented. Those are the maps that were used, and, and, and uh, the way the ordinance is written in the subdivision ordinance. Uh, they're required in the plants that are, that are turned in, uh, if they're suspected of being in the slope hazard areas, are required by the ordinance to have that stamp on it. Uh, that's a regulatory process, and without proper uh, uh, background and proper identification of specific parcels, 
it's hard to use a uh, planning map for a uh, uh, regulatory map, and that's one of the problems that I think we're running to in the planning department. It, it is. Uh, in reading this, this document, and I've read it several times when it was presented to us in 2006, and between now and then and today, and, and I can get the sense that it was actually created with regulation in mind. And it's stated, as, as Mr. Horton has stated, that it's a, uh, a planning tool and, and be used for that. We can use it for that in the way that the county decides to. But with the statement, and this is the opinion of the county staff, myself, with that statement in the subdivision ordinance, we're using them as a regulatory. I don't think that was the intent of Macon County at the time when it adopted the subdivision ordinance that we use those maps as a regulatory tool. There are four counties, I think, that have these maps. Uh, in addition to Macon, I think Henderson County, Buckman County, and the Wacaga County. And I don't know if there, any of the other counties are used them in a regulatory uh, purpose or not. Uh, I don't know if y'all had a chance to check on that, but it was my understanding. But none of the other counties that have the maps are using them in a regulatory manner. They're using them as a uh, as a tool, as you said, for planning and so forth, and it's available. But they're not using it as a regulatory measure. Is that correct? Yeah. And if I may, I believe that if Macon County desires at some point in time to use those maps as a regulatory tool, we should have an ordinance to that effect. We have to consider these maps. Are these actually our maps? And I don't think that's ever been considered by the citizens of Macon County or the board. This, this says here, anyway. I'm not sure about that the prior board. So if you want us to use a regulatory tool, that's, that's at your discretion. Well, I think the board is still in the facility. I'd like to make a motion to I think the board still in the Senate, I'd like to make a motion to drop it from this ordinance as we have stated in our last meeting. Okay. We have a motion. Do we have a second to that motion? Let me state that, um, gosh, you just can't make everybody happy. Um, I honestly don't have a problem personally with them, these maps being a recommended resource. I don't have a problem with them being an available resource. I have a slight problem with them being a required resource. So with that in mind, I'll second the motion. Okay. Discussion? I assume that motion is to adopt this amendment to the as written. That's, right. that's what I understood. This yeah, that okay. Sometimes it's easier up here than other times. This is this is one of those times that's not easy. Uh, I think that the that the maps are a great resource. I think we heard a lot of people that are a whole lot more eloquent than I am stand up and say tonight why information is important, and they're right. There, there, there's no doubt they're right. I would love to see if there wasn't some way that we can maintain the availability of the map without putting it in a regulatory spot. I don't have a snappy, I don't have a snappy answer for that. I wish I did, but my brain's so tired right now. I'm not sure. It's a public record. It is a public record. Uh, I guess what I'm saying is. You know, there's a lot of things that got thrown around here tonight that are public record, like the Constitution of the United States, but there's a lot of people that couldn't find it with both hands. Uh, my feeling is that that we we would, I have no problem with this. I, there's a fairness issue here, and I, I mean, there's no way I can get around it. Uh, there's a fairness issue, and, and, and I can't get past that, and it pains me greatly. And if there's any way we can somehow refer to and make it at least knowledgeable to people coming in here that those maps exist without putting an undue burden on the developer to place that on his on his plat, which we all know what that means. Uh, they read the words, they may never look at the map. 
And uh, I don't have a snappy answer for you, Mr. Chairman, and I don't even know that I've even made any sense. But it's a painful vote. But I, I, I just don't think that as I look at that map, that that map matches up with, with the floodplain map. It, it just doesn't. And there's a, you know, I, but I don't want to, I really, I know they're public record testers, but I mean, if there's a way that, that at least we can keep them to where people can refer to them easily, uh, like I say, the general statutes are public record too, but I don't go into them unless I can't sleep. So, you know, I, I'd love to see if there's, if somebody's got a better way than I could, uh, than I've got of uh, figuring out how to do that, Mr. Chairman or Mr. Mr. Manager, but, you know, it, it, it pains me, but I don't see the accuracies there. I, that's all I say. Not accuracy, precision. Excuse me, I, I used the wrong word, precision. Any other discussion on the motion? We're back when uh, these maps were presented in 2006. Uh, Peach Creek, the reason we were number one, of course, because of the Peach Creek disaster. Uh, after the four counties, of course, the legislature pulled the funding to do these maps. I think each county has struggled like we're struggling. Uh, not so much with, uh, with the map, but with the scale. And when you go to some of these downslope areas, uh, and when you have a piece of property and they're red, and it's it's so it's it's just too big, I think for the landowners of Macon County and the taxpayers of Macon County who own this property, we've not adopted these maps, so neither should they be regulatory maps. I think they should be available if they want to look at these maps and say this has been identified. But I don't know of nobody in the county that can say for certain you know, that the science says this is going to happen here. There's a likelihood. So with that, uh, Mr. Chairman, I would, I would support the motion. Any other discussion? Hearing none, we'll call the question. All in favor of the motion as presented signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion passes. We, uh, folks, let me say this before you leave. We, I think we're going to, we have a whole lot of rest of the agenda left, and I'm, I'm glad we're able to provide uh, air tanks or, or keep, you, keep you abused for, for five hours, but I think we've had about all we can, we can do. Uh, so we're going to recess the meeting until the end of February. We'll agree on a date before we leave out the second. 28th. 28th. 28th at uh, 6 o'clock. February 28th, is that a Tuesday? That's a Tuesday, that's two weeks on the At 6 o'clock at 5 West Main Street. No. In the 28th, it's making the bank. Huh? Ain't that one of the meetings? No, that's a... Uh, that's a... I think it is. Yeah, it's a good morning, thank you, Paul. Is that a day? Yeah, it's a good